Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is a screencast-matic presentation and recording for the lecture notes portion of your lesson on a European colonization of Africa. Before we get started, once again, please let me encourage you to open up to the correct part for today's lesson and to fill in any content that happens to be part of the fill in the blank section for your guided notes. And remember to answer any key concept questions that appear. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we understand more about the big picture of European colonization of Africa, we have to have an understanding about Africa's commerce to understand a little bit more about why the slave trade took off in the way upon which it did. So trade routes established in Africa lasted for several centuries. Most people happen to ignore the fact that before European colonization of Africa, an expansive trading system of routes and networks and communication networks were also established through different people in Africa. In fact, a rich mixture of cultures developed in Africa over time. Some of them developed specific identities based off of cultural customs and or religious practices. Not only that, but commerce also led to the slave trade in full. Many people know that the Portuguese were the first to start the international slave trade. However, it should be noted here that slavery in the whole grand scheme of world cultures and world history is much, much older. For the sake of our understanding of slavery for this unit, however, let's look at European imperialism in Africa. Gabriel Hathenroth said, I cannot think of nothing more heartening than the spectacle of the struggle waged for a century by the sons of a civilized Europe against the Sphinx that guards the mystery of Africa. This quote tells us a lot about the way upon which African slaves and African indigenous peoples endured the slave experience in a unique way. So if you recall from the previous lesson, Africa was comprised with many different diverse kingdoms. In fact, as depicted here, these kingdoms show us and tell us the story of cultural development and historical development over time. But later on, of course, different people would see Africa for different other reasons besides its primitive kingdoms that were there. In fact, for much of world history, little was known about Africa. But in 1415, Portugal began searching for an all-water route to India around Africa. As you guys can see here by this map, Portugal is the tiny European country up here on the Iberian Peninsula in Europe. And here's Africa. So over time, what happened is that Portugal explored West African coast specifically, and they established coastal colonies. Although these colonies were small at first, over time, the Portuguese managed to leave their imprint on different forms of culture in West Africa specifically, from language to religion to even architectural design. So in the 1600s, Dutch farmers called the Boers settled in fertile areas of South Africa Cape Town. And you might be familiar with South Africa from previous lessons as being the southernmost part of the continent in full. However, keep in mind South Africa and the Cape of Good Hope, which is the bottom point of that country, uh, served to be an important point for worldly explorers for many, many centuries. African rivers were mostly non-navigable, and for Europe's sake, it was quite hard for them to make any type of imprint on the interior of the continent. In fact, European knowledge of Africa's interior was rather limited, hence the often connotated term, the Dark Continent. Little was known about Africa, and even cartography map making was really primitive for its time. Although as time went on, many different types of connections began to take place between European superpowers and the different active African kingdoms that happened to be inside the continent. Let's go ahead and look at the slave trade now. So the causes of the slave trade are in fact um, probably commonly known to most students when they get to world cultures for the following few reasons. You probably learned about the African experience uh, to America via triangular trade uh, for the plantation society that would later be set up. But in, under, in order to understand slavery more holistically, we have to look at Africa too. By the 1500s, Europeans saw enslaved Africans as the most valuable African trade item. You see, enslaved Africans served the purpose of being a human bondage, and of course, the idea was to use them in masses to help produce one of the greatest economies that the world has ever seen. As I'm sure you might have known before, cotton was immensely important to many different parts of the United States, in particular the South, and Europeans used Africans in the New World to help elevate the status of the plantation system society. They also thought that they were resistant to disease, unlike Native American populations. And in many ways, this was true. However, keep in mind the slave experience was just absolutely horrible for most Africans who came here. 
So the slave trade became huge, it became profitable, and it pretty much ran and operated like a mass big business. Although it was begun by the Portuguese and later included many of the European nations, it should be noted here that all European nations had a stake in triangular trade. The idea, once again behind triangular here, was that mass Africans would be taken to the New World, whether that was to the United States or the colonies like in the French Martinique. And then of course later on, some of the products and goods from the New World came to Europe. And then this way, some of the products and goods came from Europe to Africa, thus creating the triangular shape that we know of. To allude to that, here's a diagram to help us make more sense of this. So the triangular trade system was not only an iconic sea route between Europe, Africa, and America, but it was pretty much the lifeblood of world mass transport and a worldly economy that was on the rise, which showed little signs of slowing down. Cotton was a game changer in particular due to the textile that it created, which was produced in mass numbers in the textile mills in the northern United States. Now in regards to the Middle Passage, this is often a story that seldom gets overlooked. But the fact is, is that there's more than what meets the eye. This diagram here also shows us about how uh, different types of products and goods were transported between different parts of the world, but it also connotates to the traveling of the Middle Passage, which was the voyage from Africa to the Americas on slave ships. I think one of the reasons why the real story from an African perspective is often overlooked here is that many Africans for the time uh, did not have the ability to keep records of their experiences. Uh, I think one slave name, if I can remember, is Zalata Equiano, who of course recorded his um, experiences on board a slave ship to the New World. But for the most part, this represents a cultural white lash for the time. Now, the conditions were absolutely terrible on these ships. They were in fact tightly packed, and millions of Africans did die at sea. If you can imagine being in tight, cramped quarters with so many other people, with bad hygiene, and of course just bad living standards, this created the perfect storm for diseases to ensue. Not only that, but it should also be noted here that when it comes to slavery, those who survived and managed to make it to the New World did face brutal work on plantations in the New World. The plantation system over here in the New World was often unforgiving, as there was immense pressure for slave and task forces to meet their quotas. Additionally, the effects of the slave trade are long-lasting. You see, by the 1800s, slave trade ended. Um, in fact, 11 million Africans had been sent to the Americas. I think Britain ended slavery before America, and in this way, this often created a precedent of pressure to be placed on the American slave society too. In fact, over time, the slave trade caused tribal conflict in Africa too. Trans-Saharan trade decreased and kingdoms collapsed. So the slave trade was not only bad for, of course, the experience of Africans who were uprooted from their homes and taken across the Atlantic, but it was also bad for the remaining African history and culture for the people who managed to stay behind. Not only did the system shake the whole continent, but new kingdoms were dependent on slave trade and farming and industry largely uh, was ignored during this time. So it's safe to say that as other parts of the world were taking off, Africa began to see great signs of stagnation and some would even say retrogression. Of course, that would all soon change in the scramble for Africa, when many different European countries would come into the continent and state their claim, draw up territorial borders, and of course, through direct or indirect means, rule the people of Africa. And that, of course, will be where we uh, take off.